Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's do an example of a surface integral. We have our vector, representing a vector field in the x, y, and z direction. And then we have a cube with six surfaces. And so it's a closed surface, but what we're going to do here is we're going to integrate across each of the six surfaces one at a time. We probably need more than one video to do that because I'll probably run out of board space. So we started already on surface one, and that would be the front surface right here. Notice at this point, dA would be dy times dz, change in the y direction, change in the z direction, and we're going to take the dot product between the vector and dA. So dA, the magnitude is dy dz, and it's pointing in the x direction, perpendicular to the surface. So when we take the dot product, notice we only have a surviving term right here, the x term will survive. These two will not exist after the dot product because there's no counterpart in the dA. So this becomes equal to the double integral. Of course, we're going to integrate over z. We're going to integrate over y. And so we end up with 2xz times dy dz. Now, on the first surface, notice that x will have a constant value. x will have a value equal to 2. So we can replace x by 2. So we end up with 2 times 2, which is 4, times the double integral of z times dy dz. And better yet, what I can do is I can rearrange this in such a way that I'll put the dy over here and the integral of z times dz over there. And we'll go from 0 to 2 and from 0 to 2. So you can see that we now separated the variables. We have the one integral over z and the second integral over y. So let's continue that over here. So when we take the integral of z, we end up with 4 times the integral over dy from 0 to 2. And integrate over z, we get z squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to 2. Plug in the lower limit, you get 0. Plug in the upper limit, you get 2 squared divided by 2, which is 2. Times 4 gives us 8 times the integral of dy from 0 to 2. Of course, then when we integrate over dy, we get y, so this becomes 8 times, whoop, a little bit too soon here, y evaluated from 0 to 2, plug in the lower limit, we get 0, plug in the upper limit, we get 16. So when we integrate across the first surface on the front, notice that's the surface right here, we do the surface integral, we get a value equal to 16. And remember that we always get a scalar result when we do a surface integral. And that is how it's done. Oh, no, we're not done yet. We only did the first surface. We need to continue. That's surface number one. We got five more surfaces to go. So let's do surface number two. Okay, so the surface number two, that's on the back side of the cube. We all have a dA, but now we have the same magnitude d it's dy times dz, but now it's pointing in the negative direction. So let's do this now. We have the integral. Uh, it'll be a double integral because we have to integrate over z and over y. And uh, we have the vector, which is 2xz in the x direction plus x plus 2 in the y direction plus y times z squared minus 3 in the z direction. And dot product, it'll be minus because it's pointing in the negative direction, dy dz in the x direction, or in this case, the negative x direction. Okay, we have to integrate everything the same way as before. The y and the z components drop out. So this is equal to the double integral of 2xz in the, in the x direction, multiplied times that. So that's multiplied times a minus dy dz. And notice, that looks exactly the same as what we had before, except with a negative sign. I'm suspecting we'll get the exact same result, but in the negative direction. We'll get a negative 16. Will we? Well, let's see here. Not so quick, not so fast, because now I'm on the back surface. What is the value for x along the back surface? The value of x is equal to 0. So there we can say that x is equal to 0 if I plug that value in for x. I get the double integral of 0, which is equal to 0. So actually, see how we have to be very careful? We can't just assume that now we're pointing in the opposite direction. You can see that clearly 
the integral looks exactly the same except for the negative, but here on the front surface x was equal to 2, on the back surface x is equal to 0, which makes the whole integral equal to 0, not the negative of the value of the first integral. All right, we have enough space, I think, to do surface number 3, so let's do surface 3. And surface 3 is pointing to the right. So at that point, we can say that y is equal to 2. Again, we'll have to integrate a double integral. But now we're going to integrate over this surface, meaning y is going to stay constant, x is going to change, and z is going to change. So there, the dA is going to be dx times dz. And we still have our vector, so we have 2x z in the x direction plus x plus 2 in the y direction plus y times z squared minus 3 in the z direction and we're going to have the dot product with dx dz dx dz in the y direction so let me move the 4 over a little bit I need a little bit more space right there so times the y unit vector because it's pointing in the positive y direction that's this arrow right here that's the da the little da of that particular surface so now when i do the cross product only the y terms will survive the x and the z terms will drop out so this is equal to the double integral of x plus 2 times dx dz hmm let's see here that's nice, I think we're going to integrate over x first because we have an x in here. And then, of course, we plug in the, value, the changes in x, which is from 0 to 2. So from 0 to 2 and from 0 to 2 for the x and the z. This is equal to, I'm going to place a z over here. So the integral of dz from 0 to 2 and the integral of x plus 2 quantity dx also from 0 to 2. So we're going to integrate this first. So this becomes the integral of dz times x squared over 2 plus 2x evaluated from 0 to 2. Now when we plug in the lower limit, we get nothing. Plug in the upper limit, we get the following. That's the integral from 0 to 2 of dz times, this just gives us 4 divided by 2, which is 2, plus 4, which is 6. So this gives us... 6 times the integral of dz from 0 to 2, which is equal to 6 times z from 0 to 2. Again, plug in the lower limit, we get nothing. And this is a very tiny 0 here. There we go. There we go. And plug in the upper limit, we get 6 times 2, which is equal to 12. So now we have the value of the surface integral across the third surface. So on the first surface, we get 16. On the second surface, we get 0. On the third surface, we get 12. And let me write that down here. So we end up with 16, 0, and 12 for the first three surfaces. Now we need to do this again. We'll do another video. And we'll do the next three surfaces. Add them all together, and that will give us the total surface integral across all six surfaces with that particular vector. And that is how it's done.